Aloha everybody and welcome to Hawaii Volcano Watch. This is a new series I'm going to do in order to keep updates on the Hawaii Kilauea Volcano, but not just the Kilauea Volcano. We will also be taking a look at Mauna Loa uh, and uh, Mauna Kea if necessary, but uh, just keep an eye on their current activity. And the reason why is because we've had some uh, changes in the uh, alert status for the volcano and some other uh, observations. In tonight's Volcano Watch report, we will be looking at the Kilauea Volcano. It is the one that's had the current activity level change and some other interesting observations and information has been released. The USGS and Hawaii Volcano Observatory reports for Tuesday, March 26, 2019 at 4.29 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. The Kilauea Volcano alert level has been changed to normal. Previous uh, status level was advisory or yellow condition. It has been changed to normal green condition and the current aviation color code has also been reduced to green. Activity summary reports the Kilauea volcano is not erupting. Monitoring data over the past eight months have shown relatively low rates of seismicity, deformation, and gas emissions at the summit and east rift zone, including the area of the 2018 eruption. Accordingly, today the Hawaii Volcano Observatory lowered the volcano alert level for ground-based hazards from advisory to normal or yellow to green. This means the volcano is at a non-eruptive background state. The aviation color code was also lowered from yellow to green. Despite this change, Kilauea remains a active volcano and it will erupt again. Although we expect clear signs prior to a return to eruption, the time frame of warning may be short Island of Hawaii residents should be familiar with long-term hazard map for Kilauea Volcano and how to stay informed about Kilauea activity. Observations This past week saw no significant change in monitoring data or volcanic activity. Low rates of seismicity continue across the volcano, with earthquakes occurring primarily in the summit and south flank regions. GPS stations and tilt meters continue to show motions consistent with refilling of the deep east rift zone magma reservoir. Sulfur dioxide emission rates from the summit and from Pu'uo'o remain low. These rates have been steady over the past several weeks. A GPS station on the north flank of Pu'uo'o has been showing steady slumping of the crater's edge. This motion is not directly related to magmatic activity, but is interpreted to be sliding of the unstable edge of the Pu'u'u'u cone. Small collapses at Pu'u'u'u have occurred since the eruption due to instability. Hazards remain in the lower east rift zone eruption area and at the Kilauea summit. Residents and visitors near the 2018 fissures, lava flows, and summit collapse area should heed Hawaii County Civil Defense and National Park warnings. Hawaii County Civil Defense advises that lava flows and features created by the 2018 eruption are primarily on private property and persons are asked to be respectful and not enter or park on private property. The Hawaii Volcano Observatory continues to closely monitor Kilauea's seismicity deformation, and gas emissions for any sign of increased activity. HVO maintains visual surveillance of the volcano with web cameras and occasional field visits. HVO will continue to issue a weekly update every Tuesday until further notice and we will issue additional messages as warranted by changing activity. And that'll do it for the summary report. Now we're going to move over to the actual volcanic activity notice, which includes some expanded information and details. This activity notice was issued by the HVO USGS for the Kilauea volcano on Tuesday, March 26, 2019 at 3.07 p.m. Hawaii Standard Time. 
The source is the Hawaii Volcano Observatory. The volcanic activity summary is as follows. Kilauea Volcano is quiet. Monitoring data over the past eight months have shown relatively low rates of seismicity, deformation, and gas emissions at the summit and east rift zone, including the area of the 2018 eruption. Accordingly, the Hawaiian Volcano Observatory is lowering the volcano alert level from ground or foreground based hazards from advisory to normal. This means the volcano is at a non eruptive background state. The aviation color code is also being lowered from yellow to green. Despite this change, some hazard conditions remain and are described below. Kilauea remains an active volcano and it will erupt again. Although we expect clear signs prior to a return to eruption, the time frame of warning may be short and Island of Hawaii residents should be familiar with the long-term hazard map for Kilauea Volcano and how to stay informed about Kilauea activity. The following is a list of recent observations. Volcanic cloud height, only minor fume from active areas. Other volcanic cloud information, none at this time. Lava flow slash dome, no active lava at this time. Lava flow, no active lava at this time. Hazard analysis list. General hazards, continuing hazards in areas of recent activity. Ash cloud, not a concern at this time. Ash fall, not a concern at this time. Lava flow slash dome, no active lava at this time. Other hazards, low levels of degassing, hot, steaming ground cracks, rugged, unstable new lava surfaces. Volcanic gas, SO2 emission rates less than 100 tons per day for the entire volcano. Lava flow, no active lava at this time. Remarks on the current state of the volcano is as follows. Kilauea Volcano has maintained a low level of non-eruptive unrest since the end of the Lower East Rift Zone eruption and summit collapse in early September 2018. The past nearly eight months without active lava at the surface of the volcano marks the longest time interval without eruption since the 17-month period between November 1979 and April 1982. The total combined sulfur dioxide SO2, emission rate from the summit Pu'uo'o, and the Lower East Rift Zone fissure vents is currently less than 100 tons per day, well below pre-2018 levels. Seismicity remains relatively low and steady across the volcano, although weekly earthquake counts are elevated above pre-2018 eruption levels, they do not reflect shallowing of magma that typically occurs prior to eruption outbreaks. Most of these earthquakes are aftershocks of the May 4, 2018 magnitude 6.9 Kalapana earthquake, and they will continue at declining rates. Earthquakes such as the March 13, 2019 magnitude 5.5 south flank event reflect ongoing south flank instability and are not a sign of renewed eruption potential. Ground deformation continues, but at rates below those during the period of major eruptive activity in 2018. Deformation rates on the East Rift Zone and at the Kilauea Summit are still higher than they were prior to April 2018, but have been slowly decreasing. The Middle East Rift Zone between Pu'o'o and Highway 130 continues to show ground motion that likely reflects slow refilling of the Deep Rift Zone. Deformation rates may remain high as magma entering Kilauea system is stored rather than erupted. Motion on Kilauea south flank is higher than before May's magnitude 6.9 earthquake. This motion is consistent with increased sliding of Kilauea's decolement fault in a proce process called afterslip, which is expected following a large earthquake. Moving on, what is next at Kilauea Volcano? Since the early 1800s, when written records of Hawaiian volcanoes began, Kilauea has had infrequent periods during which no lava erupted. 
The longest known eruptive pause was in 1935 to 1952, ending with the eruption in the caldera. Neither the 17-year pause nor any other shorter pause followed partial collapse of the caldera such as the collapse that occurred in the summer of 2018. After partial caldera collapses in 1840 and 1868, lava returned to the caldera within days to a few weeks. The length of the current pause already exceeds those earlier post-collapse pauses. Following partial caldera collapses, the first eruption outside the caldera took place on the East Rift Zone 17 years after the 1823 collapse, on the Southwest Rift Zone 28 years after the 1840 collapse, and on the Southwest Rift Zone 52 years after the 1868 collapse. On the basis of these observations, we think it's most likely that the next eruptive, or excuse me, the next eruption of Kilauea will take place in the caldera within a few years, and that the next eruption on one of the volcano's rift zones will be in a decade or longer. This prognosis assumes a return to Kilauea's general style of behavior for the past 200 years. There remains the possibility that Kilauea's behavior may return to the dominantly explosive 300 years preceding the early 1800s. Monitoring and ongoing analysis by HBO may be able to determine in advance which style of behavior will eventually prevail, but it is currently too early to tell. Importantly, current monitoring data do not suggest a return to eruptive activity or summit collapse in the coming months. However, Kilauea is one of the most active volcanoes in the world and additional eruptions will occur. Residents should remain informed of the volcano's status, learn about long-term hazards, and understand how alerts and warnings of volcanic activity are distributed. Now moving on, we're going to wrap this up with continuing hazards. Despite diminished activity on Kilauea, hazardous conditions remain in the East Rift Zone and at the summit of the volcano. The Lower East Rift Zone and Pu'o'o lava flow fields include large areas of still warm, rugged, extremely sharp, and unstable lava surfaces that are subject to collapse. During heavy rain, whiteout conditions from steam produced by rainwater interacting with hot rock could develop on the lava flows leading to dangerous conditions. Recent collapses of the new shoreline are not known to have occurred, but could happen should the new lava sea cliffs become unstable. SO2 gas emissions have greatly decreased from lower East Rift Zone vents to a level below instrumental detection on area roadways. However, locally higher concentrations of SO2 or H2S hydrogen sulfide may persist and residents in downwind areas may from time to time notice odors of these gases. Steaming cracks are especially common just west of Highway 130. HBO continues to monitor these cracks periodically for changes and will do so for the foreseeable future. Some of what emanates from these thermal areas is related to decomposition of vegetation and is not degassing magma. Emissions from these cracks are likely to occur for years and may change with atmospheric conditions and wind. Around Fissure 8, thick accumulations of tephra, fragmental volcanic debris, hide underground hazards such as holes, ground cracks, and collapsed houses and water tanks. Winds can pick up glassy and lightweight fragments, including Pele's hair, and carry them downwind. Defer can irritate eyes, skin, and respiratory systems, so prolonged exposure should be avoided. At the Kilauea summit, steep crater walls destabilized by 2018 collapse events and earthquakes may be prone to sudden slumping or rock falls for years to come, even without further ground shaking. Local concentrations of SO2, or H2S, hydrogen sulfide, remain low, but people in downwind areas may from time to time notice odors of these gases. As the water table beneath the caldera adjusts to post-collapse conditions and possibly returns to the area of subsidence, 
it is possible but not certain that hydrothermal explosions could occur. Kilauea Volcano, as well as the entire island of Hawaii, remains an area of ongoing earthquake hazard. Additional aftershocks from the May 4, 2018 magnitude 6.9 earthquake and the March 13, 2019 magnitude 5.5 earthquake are expected and some could be damaging. HVO continues to closely monitor incoming geologic, seismic, deformation, and gas data for evidence of significant magma shallowing or pressurization that could mean Kilauea Volcano's magmatic system is building towards renewed activity. And finally, a reminder from Hawaii County Civil Defense. Hawaii County Civil Defense advises that lava flows and features created by the 2018 eruption are primarily on private property and persons are asked to be respectful and do not enter or park on private property. And that'll do it for this episode of the Hawaii Volcano Watch Kilauea Edition. The next Hawaii Volcano Watch report will be issued as new information comes available or current conditions change. And as always, thank you for watching and have an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening.